Hi, welcome to this mini video on the assembly of the Arduino compatible breadboard kit. Right, this is the, the kit as you'll get it in your package. You get your breadboard, your AT Mega chip, you get a couple of capacitors for dealing with voltage spikes should you get any. You get a resistor, a reset button, you also get a 16 megahertz crystal, a couple of capacitors, and you also get an electrolytic capacitor. You'll be able to download the instruction sheets from Protopic, and they are at the bottom of the page where you ordered or can order this breadboard kit. Right, now the way you put this kit together is there's a, a, a key feature you need to know on these chips and that is where pin 1 is. Now this is marked with this um, divot for choice of a better word and here's a close up of it. Now this donates pin 1 on this chip and it goes from pin 1 down to pin 14 and then pin 15 up to pin 28 so it goes counterclockwise when you're counting so 1, 2, 3 etc and then you've got 26, 27, 28 up the other side Right now to assemble this kit I'll be working from the instructions supplied in the download at protopic.co.uk Put this kit together, we have initially the breadboard, the chip is to be mounted at the bottom of the breadboard and pressed in firmly. As you can see, it sits nice and flat on there. Next it's the capacitors. So if we get one of the orange capacitors, this goes between pin 7 and 8. So what I'll do is count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So that will go in between pin 7 and 8 there. Next it's looking to install these small capacitors. These are the ones for the crystal. And going by the image we have 8 and 9 here and 9 and 10 Sorry, 8 and 10. I do apologise on that. On that one. Now these are the capacitors that allow the crystal to work correctly. And next it is looking for the, the crystal to be installed. Now the crystal fits across the diagonals. And it fits between pins 9 and 10. Fits in there quite nicely as you can see there. Uh, next, we are, will install this capacitor. This capacitor goes between pins 21 and 22. So I will count that down. So 28, 27, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. So that goes in this location. So I will pop that in as per the picture. One from the outside, two from the actual chip itself. Next up, we install a resistor. Now, I've already bent this resistor to shape just to make this video a little bit shorter for us. And it goes between pins 1 and pin 7. And it's easier if you put that on the outside there. And also the reset button goes across the top. There. Now that's basically everything that you need there other than installing jumper wires. Now the jumper wires, I'll just pop these in just now. Now as per the diagram, they go between the bottom of the reset button and pin 1. So I'll install that there. Now jumper wires are not included in the kit, so you will either need to buy these uh, as a kit from us. Uh, the breadboard, sorry, the jumper wire kits are available on the website. Just do a search for jumper wire, 
and the uh, the wires. You can also just use offcuts of wire as well. Now the next wire here goes from the top of the orange capacitor up to the top right hand pin of the reset button there. Next we have two wires to carry the power across from one side of the board here and that is going across and that's going into the one connection between the resistors there. Move that out of the road and finally down here to there. Now you'll see that all these are actually marked on the diagram. I'll actually show you the diagram here that I'm using. I've downloaded this from the website and as you can see we have the jumpers that are marked on here ready to go. Bring the board back in. Right, to run this Arduino you will need power. Now I'm just going to use jumper wires as a demonstration though obviously you would connect power to the, the other end of these cables. But when you come in what you need to do is have a, a negative wire that goes to where the blue and green wires I'm using in this case are and that would run off to your negative or ground. Miss one and then down to where this wire is by itself and that would be your positive. And you would then supply 5 volts to your board and the Arduino itself or the Arduino chip itself will be up and running at that point. Now the Arduino itself has all the pins numbered in a nice easy format for you to understand uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 etc. Now the chip itself doesn't have these marked and for instance on the Arduino pin 13 on the chip is not the 13th pin. What I'll do is I'll bring in the, the pin mapping just now and I'll explain this for you. So there we have the pin mapping. Now, pin 1 uh, pin one is your reset button. Pin 2 is digital pin 0 or your receive on the UART. The third pin is digital pin 1 which is the transmit on the UART and then you go into your standard digital pins so you have pin number 4 or the 4th pin is digital pin 2 that's fine down to the 6th pin then you have VCC which is your power supply ground and your crystal that's what the crystals and the capacitors are connected to here then the 11th pin down is digital pin number 5. Now we've included this in the download so you can transfer your own design to a standalone version uh, relatively easily. All you have to do is remember to look up this particular uh, sheet and as I was saying pin 13 uh, is not on the 13th pin. Pin 13 is actually on the 19th pin there. And as you can see this gives you the pin number and the name of the pin supplied by Artmel, the manufacturer of the chip, and the name of the pin as the Arduino would call it. Now we need to program our chip. Now one of the methods that we cover for doing this is using an FTDI board. So on here we will assume that you have this unplugged from your PC it's always worthwhile not plugging these into your PC when you're plugging your jump leads in and out because you may short circuit something and if there's no power on it the chances of doing damage are minimised. Right, on here we have various connections. We have a reset, 
RX, TX, power. This pin is not used though it is connected. Uh, it's a clear to send pin. And then we have black which is ground. Now the kit comes with an electrolytic capacitor. Now this capacitor is used for the reset on the board. Using the FDDI the board will not automatically reset unless you have this particular capacitor hooked up correctly. So if I show you the capacitor has no markings on one side and a negative marking on the other. The negative marking will actually go to pin 1 of your chip and the other side will go between the two reset legs of the reset button. And then you hook up power coming in to power on the FDDI, ground to ground, you would then connect TX to pin 2, which is receive because you're transmitting from the FDDI and receiving on your standalone. you would then receive the transmitted information from the standalone chip and finally you have the reset line or the DTR line and that goes to the positive side of that capacitor and that would be a standalone based programmer as well you Select your Arduino Uno and the IDE. You hook this up using the USB lead. You would then select whatever COM port your FDDI board was on. Press upload on the IDE and that's your chip programmed. And that is our Arduino compatible breadboard kit. Thanks for watching.